Hello, I'm Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the LP News Network. With us today is Keith White, the Senior Vice President of Loss Prevention at the Gap, Inc. With a Master's in Criminology and a BS degree in Law Enforcement Administration, Keith has been leading the loss prevention efforts at Gap for the last 15 years. As a member of the NRF's Loss Prevention Advisory Council since 1997, and as a past president and current senior leader of the International Organization of Black Security Executives, Keith has played a vital role in helping to steer this industry and develop countless executives. His commitment and passion for teaching and sharing and mentoring is virtually unmatched in our industry. And his courage for dealing straight up with subjects that most would not even broach is what leads to today's session, the unwritten rules of corporate America. With that, I'd like to thank Keith for being here and open up the conversation. You're welcome. So, Mr. White, what are the unwritten rules of corporate America and, and what led you to putting them together? That's, that's very interesting. You know, I was asked to do a presentation uh, for a group of uh, college graduates uh, who were entering the workforce on the unwritten rules of corporate America, and I signed up for it right away because I thought, that'll be fun. There's got to be a ton of research out there on it. Um, I went to the library, I went online, I looked for books, and there's a reason the rules are unwritten. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing that I really could find um, that I thought was credible um, and something that I could put really? in front of people. So I did the next best thing. I sent out an email blast to CEOs, CFOs, a lot of C-suite people um, that I had known over the years, and I was really impressed with what they sent back. Um, and I, as I was getting all of this information back, I said, I got to bucket it, you know, because I can't repeat everything that they've said. Um, and I found that there were three categories um, that really stood out above everything else. One was integrity, one was the ability to communicate, and three was building teams. Um, and they um, kind of form what I felt um, was really the unwritten rules. And how, can you go into the integrity and, and break down each one for us a little a bit? Absolutely. You know, it's not the kind of integrity um, that I'm sure everybody thinks about. Don't steal, don't cheat, that type of mm -hmm. thing. They take that for granted, that you're going to have that type of honesty um, and integrity. It's the kind of integrity that says, uh, I'm accountable. I'm responsible for that. Um, I own that. Mm -hmm. um, that won't happen again on my watch the kind of integrity that people look towards um, in the time of indifference or, or, or challenges where it's clear who the owner is um, and who's going to you know, deliver um, on what the promise is or the commitment is. And it's really been you know, uh, interesting for me to kind of not only do the work where I was able to unveil that that was a call out, but to also watch people that I've worked with and how they show up um, in that category. And it's very clear to me that if you do have that level of integrity, it stands above all else. Um, and it allows you to function and navigate through the uh, corporate environment. The second being communications. Um, and it's not whether or not you write well or whether or not you speak well, it's how well do you listen are you someone um, that's viewed as approachable? Are you someone who communicates well enough that it opens networks and doors and relationships outside of your pyramid, mm -hmm. that you are absolutely networked and linked throughout the entire organization, in some cases throughout the industry, because it means that you get information first, you get information fast, that you have more resources available at your disposal, it's kind of like, you know, learning um, is the new knowing. You don't always have to know everything, but if you're able to learn and access uh, information from various people, you have an advantage, a very distinct advantage. And the other piece of that was whether or not you deliver bad news fast. Mm. And that's a piece of communication that I think a lot of people, you know, fast forward uh, past and, and they don't really understand how that, that shows up and, and whether or not um, that gives them that credibility or that, that integrity that I talked about earlier. Well, getting out of your comfort zone and 
in delivering bad news, conflict management and such, that's a hard thing for a lot of folks. It, it's a big deal, and, and a subtext of that is being able to speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, uh, folks, um, you know, kind of wilt under that pressure, and they want to herd up, um, they don't want to have a, that dissenting opinion, and they're very uncomfortable, you know, being uh, in the minority point of view when everyone else is in the majority point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, that level of communication, that level of integrity is what I discovered to be one of uh, uh, the unwritten rules. So, so the integrity piece is first for an intentional. And intentionally, because you have to have that yes. to go into the communication side. It sets it up yeah. extremely well, yeah. which leads to the third area. That's all about people and building teams. And, and I'm sure you know the audience is thinking, well, that's kind of cliche. You, right. know, you have to be able to build teams. Um, but it's not a given. Um, everyone doesn't build teams well. And one of the best gauges I, I got from the material that I was getting back from you know, everyone, the, the, the communications, was the fact that does your team embody a lot of the attributes that you have? And I don't mean copy or mimic, I mean embody. Mm -hmm. So that if you're not available and someone comes to one of your team members, will they show the same sense of urgency? Will they show the same level of judgment? Um, will they show the same level of intensity if it's one of those matters that you really need um, some focus and attention mm -hmm. around? Mm -hmm. Do they get it? And can you, do, can you see that attribute throughout the organization um, that you have? Do you have a followership that when they're on your team, it's in some cases hard to tell their approach um, and their seriousness about an issue that's concerning uh, versus yours. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really interesting. So you still have diversity. Mm -hmm. don't, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. You don't want a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, carbon copies walking around. But the real question was whether or not that value system lives and stands up in that team. Because if it does, and if you are a great leader, um, the legacy and the ability to build and promote and, and you know, develop people is very, very easy. Well, and you've also got to be able to influence those folks, to motivate them, Absolutely. to get them to, to carry through with your beliefs or issues or programs or, or whatever. So it has a lot to do, and that team definition expands beyond your own team. I would assume that the team is the entire company. Absolutely. The entire brand. Absolutely. Inside and out in the entire industry. Absolutely. Because we as an industry are in fact a team. Absolutely. So, so the ability to carry that through with integrity, communication and such, it, it, it goes from inside your small team to the entire industry. Well, and, and I would add, Gus, that the oil and that engine, that mechanism that you just described, mm -hmm. is emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things um, that was not necessarily stated, but I was able to glean that from all the different uh, pieces of feedback that I was receiving. How well um, do you build relationships and how self-aware are you of how you're coming off um, to others? Um, and then how aware are you of the different types of social situations um, that exists. How well do you manage relationships and then how well do you manage how well do you come off and how how you're being uh, perceived and if you have a low level of emotional intelligence um, it could absolutely be um, a career staller mm -hmm. um, and, and that was the kind of for me the oil and the engine that made everything kind of come together. Mm -hmm. And this is not only inside the organ or inside while you're working, this also carries through to you as a person, as a leader, as an executive, even outside of, of the four walls of the business. I mean, a perfect example is what happened with one of the J. Crew executives last week or the week before with the job cuts and regretfully posted some, you know, inappropriate things on Instagram and, and lost his job. And I feel terrible for the executive. Absolutely. But it does kind of carry this this whole theme here beyond it. Well, you know, we are heavily invested in emotional intelligence. And I just got to share this one example with you. 
there's a young lady on my team, you know, who had been in the same position for years, excellent at what she did, subject matter expert, but was not aware and was not self-aware that people didn't really want to work with her because they <laughs> didn't see her as someone um, who you could have a, a good working relationship with because she was just so serious and actually um, they felt like a little mean. Mm -hmm. So she goes to this training and she says it completely changed her life. Professionally, it really put her on to something. But personally, her family and friends noticed that there was such a difference. Mm -hmm. um, it was like an unlock to how she uh, could understood or appreciated how she was projecting herself to others and it was like the lights had been turned off you know mm -hmm. you know most of her professional career you know so integrity communication and team yes so given all that you've said uh, what advice would you have or would you give to those executives who, who may need to work on some of these areas I mean because a lot of what you're talking about is intuitive ability it's reading your environment, it's self-confidence, it's em emotional maturity. How does an executive who may need to work on some of these areas actually develop them? And it's a hard question and not an easy answer, I don't think, and, and quite hard for a lot of folks to do. Well, you know, it, it requires lowering um, the water um, uh, around the iceberg. Um, <laughs> in, in other words, you have to, you know, be vulnerable enough to show people a side of you um, that they haven't ordinarily seen. And you have to trust, um, you know, some key people um, to tell you exactly, you know, what they think. And you have to be ready for um, the feedback uh, uh, in terms of how you're coming off, how did you handle a particular situation, what are those things that you need, you truly need to develop. And, and I've found that when the feedback is most direct, um, and it's most critical, um, it's actually most helpful. Hmm. You know, you, I mean, it's great when you get feedback that's pat on the back, great yeah. job, keep it up, um, but the feedback that really moves the needle mm -hmm. and that, that forces you to improve and become much more um, effective in your role and the experience growth in those areas is, is the feedback that's the most critical and you have to seek it out from people you don't ordinarily want feedback from. And it's the hardest to hear. And it's the hardest to hear. Now, Keith, thanks for taking the time today. We greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. Always. Well, that's it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you watching, and we hope it uh, helps you in navigating your career. So until next time, let's keep them all safe out there. Mm -hmm.